All right, so pay no attention to the mess. Had to had to throw some stuff to the side to clear space to kind of get somewhere where we could sort of place this box. And uh, what we're looking at is pretty obvious. What's not obvious for some of you is I've had this thing sitting here for probably six to eight months. So <laughs> maybe longer than that. I picked this up shortly after it came out. Uh, there was kind of a price jump and then a price drop and then it went up again and uh, I sort of got on it. It was a pretty big sale. I think this goes back to maybe Black Friday or before Black Friday. Bottom line, what this thing is going to retail for right now is like $139. Uh, obviously, you can usually put a coupon on that, which they sort of kind of brought back with some semblance of regularity. Uh, also, you can kind of wait for the instant savings, you know, or the every two weeks or so coupons to kind of price breaks, whatever you want to call them, to kick in. Uh, long story short, if you are patient, you can probably snag this for right around 100, whether it's 99 or 109, maybe 119. Uh, if you're patient, you can save yourself a little bit of money. I want to say I picked it up for sub 100, whether that's 99 or somewhere in that range, and that's why I pulled the trigger. Uh, this is something just like the little Hercules sander. I'm not going to be an expert. I'm not going to have a ton of experience with anything like this uh, at work. Uh, we use sanders all the time. They're just going to be vertical two inch belts. Uh, they're usually Kalamazoo. There's some old like Baldor branded ones too from way back in the day. But uh, you can actually get a pretty solid American made belt sander, like a vertical belt sander for still pretty reasonably priced. Now with this being at home and kind of not knowing if this is going to do what I want it to do or not, I took a swing on it. Uh, since then it's actually had positive reviews which is great. Hopefully I don't have a lemon here. <laughs> but, uh, it is their part number 2010 6E-B. I'll have it linked down below. Again I make nothing off of that. Uh, this is a 4x36 inch belt sander, so essentially, you know, like at work where I'm used to, you know, like the 2 inch, now we're 4 inch. Uh, obviously, if you can't tell by our picture here, you know, you can have this flat. So if you wanted to just come down and uh, bear down on an item, you know, to sand, you can do that, provided it doesn't fly anywhere. Similarly, you can come and you can turn this thing full vertical, uh, 0 to 90 degrees. So it's roughly, what, like 45 there to kind of give you an idea. And then the other selling point, down there on the bottom, we've got this little deck with some sort of a miter gauge type deal, right? So you can come in, conceivably grind whatever you want to. Uh, and for me, this is not based off of wood interest. This is based off of metal and <laughs> essentially rounding edges quicker. Uh, not always having to use like the bench grinder, especially like with aluminum and some lighter stock. Uh, this would be really good for keyways, things along those lines. Uh, but mainly just like shaping things, uh, grinding off chisels sort of along those lines, sharpening them. Uh, that's sort of the ticket for me and the appeal. So why am I opening it now when it's been sitting in the floor just fine and perfectly content? I've got some headers in the floor. I'm planning on putting V-bands on them, so I need to clean the stock up. It's a super awkward thing to use for the first time on something like this, but I'm going to give it a go, see what happens. Uh, it would be really cool if this had variable speed. Uh, I'm less likely than to have a primary mangle my <laughs> fingers back into my wrist. I'm not sure that it does, but uh, you can kind of, you've probably been reading along again, cover the 0 to 90. It's 4.3 amp motor, which is fairly respectable. Uh, 1,800 surface feet per minute. I think it's like just shy of 3,600 RPM. This is corded, not battery powered. Some of you may want this battery powered. I don't. I'm not interested in this being mobile. I'm not interested in if I want it to be semi-mobile, I'll take it outside where I prefer to sand so I don't have to clean up as big of a mess in here. And it's simply a situation, I'll run an extension cord. I can only assume, I don't care if we're talking, if you think Bauer and Hercules and Harbor Freight are junk, if you hate Ryobi, if you're Milwaukee or Bust, if you're Snap-on, anyone that made a sander like this it was battery powered i don't think you're going to get very good like life cycle out of it sort of like an angle grinder it's just going to eat your batteries so uh corded is fine for me maybe some of you you know like job site or whatever would prefer battery maybe someone makes one i don't know like i said this is far from my area of expertise I just thought it was a good deal worth trying and will come in handy and ultimately save me time. So what I'm going to do is just open this stupid thing, set it on the table. I'll try to highlight if there's any specs or anything of interest on the back of the box or some side panel. I'll showcase it then. 
it is stupid. It's not super hot. It's like just shy of 90, which is not that bad, but it's the humidity. Like I live in the, what's becoming the desert, you know, we're, we're typically like high fire danger. So this, this humidity thing is not cool. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get this done as quick as I can. So uh, we'll take a look at it, see what we think. Maybe I'll even find something around the shop. We can kind of put a little quick sand on. And then I believe at that same time, I went ahead and bought some belts and some uh, six inch discs. So we'll kind of showcase those. And like I said, should be able to apply. If you have your preferred brand of abrasive, I'm sure it'll interchange fairly easily. So with that said, I'm going to get this thing open and we'll see what we think of it. I am a sucker for packaging. This has a full foam clamshell, which is better than expected. You can see the instructions that fell down there. And taking you up, we've already got the belt installed, so you don't even have to jack with that. You could probably just plug this thing in and go. But again, check it out. If you see down there, man, I'm having to like, really stand up to showcase this, but the foam clamshell, it literally encases the whole thing. So that is super cool. Uh, I'm going to fish this out. It won't be the easiest thing. looks like we'll probably have to assemble that side table. We'll see what's all involved in that. But uh, once again, worthwhile noting, if you were to have to have this shipped in, which I would advise against, I would try to pick this up in the store. Uh, trust me on that. <laughs> it's, uh, it should ship okay because this does, again, have a full foam clamshell. All right, so here we are a few seconds later. It wasn't too difficult to get out of the box. Doesn't look like there's going to be too much assembly. It's almost like plug and play. In fact, if you don't care about the uh, guards or the stops or the um, miter gauge, you can pretty much just start sanding if you plug it in. So, uh, long story short, though, this is what we want to highlight. Uh, it's again equipped already with the 4x36 and the 6 inch disc. There is a 2.5 inch dust port. Should be compatible with shop vacs. You can easily mix so. Uh, it's got a steel base and body. It's got the adjustable miter gauge. The table easily mounts to either disc or belt, uh, which I guess we'll have to see. That's kind of confusing worded, but I assume that means it will either articulate at the bottom or somehow at the top or the side. Again, we'll have to play with it. Uh, they claim that the adjustable belt tracking is functional. Uh, again, 0 to 90, that's a big selling point for me because then I've kind of... You almost have like an... Uh, like a poor man's surface grinder and a traditional like you have at work you know the two inch belt sander so kind of the the best of both worlds if it doesn't suck uh, tension release lever for simple sandpaper grit changes so again you know let's say you're doing like heavy heavy stock removal and then you kind of want to polish it out or get something a lot finer it should be relatively easy to do so again we'll try to check that out uh, they claim it's 35 pounds, roughly 18.8 .8 by 14 by 11 and a half. And again, we've covered everything else, 4.3 amp motor. So I guess I will just uh, tell you, I grabbed it out of the box like this, lifted straight up from the toolbox, and it came out just fine. It didn't snap. That's sort of my test. I was going to see how sturdy it would latch in place to be flat. Looks like it's fairly solid in that regard, at least initially. And uh, subsequently, we're going to kill this, set that on the toolbox, and uh, probably get it assembled, see what we think of it. All right, so a quick little uh, once-over with the machine here. Not too shabby looking initially. Granted, we haven't fired it up. That's kind of important as well. Let's uh, cover some things here. Uh, again, the way we've got this positioned, it's facing out. We would have access to both sides here on a bench top scenario. So we've got our 6-inch disc. We have got our 4-inch belt on top. The setup options, basically, if you wanted to, I assume you could kind of nest, you know, the guard there. Uh, I'm not sure if you would do that or just use this guard. Uh, I guess this would be the safer option. Again, that's not how they advise setting it up, but I suppose it's something you could do. Uh, the as pictured table, you're kind of going to see right here, there's sort of this like swing arm looking piece. A little gauge kind of looks like a smiley face, right? So this tab right here is going to nest this little dowel pin or peg, whatever you want to call it. And there is a port on the side right here. And then the arrow, sort of the needle looking thing, there's a little miter gauge on the back. So obviously you would prefer to have this 90 degrees flush, but if for whatever reason, you know, you needed something turned down 15 degrees, 30, whatever angle you want, this pointer right here does coincide with a tucked in little miter gauge on this section. Let me see if I can awkwardly spin it a little bit for you. Uh, 
Can I go all the way? We can. Sweet. Okay. So this works well. Uh, right there, that is the area in question. So apologies for the tripod noise, but again, you basically got uh, 15, 30, 45, so that's your area of articulation. This would be your dust port, if I pan back out for you. Essentially, you know, obviously your belt's going to run this direction, so all the debris should, in theory, come down here, aside from what, you know, stays put, stays stagnant, or shoots into the air. So some of it will inevitably come down here. You can hook it up to a shop vac, collection system, whatever stuff you've got. This little screw right here is very important because this is going to be what locks this flat at an angle or upright 90 degrees. So if I tilt you up and you're looking at Pac-Man, all right, I've already loosened this. So I can come in, you can kind of see that's off at an angle. It can stop literally anywhere along the way. So that is worth noting as well. This is essentially full on 90. I know you're not really seeing it. So we'll do some little magic here <laughs> you're not usually on this part of the shop right but uh, that's sort of how that would be set up this is intended you know like your default scenario you would have your guard right here obviously that's important you don't want what your work piece is to come in especially with something finite screwdriver pry bar chisel for example you could easily get thrown down in here. This is plastic. Uh, your workpiece and RPM is likely going to win. I've got a low battery light, which is really unfortunate, but there are two bolts on the side, and this would just position. Obviously, if you want to grind this down, you can have it back. Otherwise, you just pull it out just a little bit. Uh, would be ideal, probably like an eighth of an inch or something. I'll try once more to spin it just a bit. Now we're kind of catching on the mat, but I'll just do it this way to cheese it for you. These are the two bolt holes. This right here though, the round hole with no threads, that's important because we can conceivably tuck this sucker in, uh, bolt this up. Obviously you wouldn't have a miter gauge in this scenario, but if you just feel more at home or you like the security, whatever your logic is of having a work table here as opposed to just the guard, you can certainly make that happen. We'll punch that out of the way. Uh, right here I do want to tell you you've got two included hardware pieces for your guard. Uh, this is a five millimeter uh, key that they have included, or is it six? Might be six. Yeah, it's six, and we won't be using that. I've got a good one from Viha here. <laughs> Get way more leverage with that. Lock it in place, unlock it, whatever you need to do. Uh, if we spin her back to the back, there's really nothing to see. In fact, I may just take you over there. <laughs> you get the idea. I'm very tempted to paint this thing. I think it would look pretty good blue. Uh, also of note, this is just a situation where Bauer has this item. Hercules does not have an equivalent to this. If they did, that's probably the route I would have gone just because I've got Hercules. This is my first ever Bauer product for what it's worth. <laughs> and, uh, it's not a huge deal, but it is worth mentioning. Uh, backside, you probably don't want to sand anything on that because you will be going in a bad direction. Uh, again, right here, obviously, you know, you'll want to sand or grind over this direction as opposed to here coming down and again you should lock this in place every time this is just demo purposes this is a key this is kind of like new to me again i'm used to stuff from the 60s and 70s but if it's in place you can go on you can go off if you take that out which they advise you can't go on and off uh there is no spare key included either which kind of seems catastrophic to me if anyone actually does that or if it's mandated by workplace safety or restrictions or something those are going to be gone. That's probably a hot seller. And if it's ever out of stock or something stupid, you're up a creek unless you just take it apart and hardwire it. So that's, uh, again, if you do stuff like that, include at least one backup. Uh, the belt tensioner is here, or I guess that's the adjustment knob, right? And then if we want to change the belt, it's this little lever here. It's pretty simple seeming. To change the disc, it's a little bit more complicated. We would have these two screws. Uh, take those off. I assume it's pull and stick again. I'm not a woodworker. <laughs> it's, uh, our little miter gauge here. It is plastic on a piece of aluminum flat stock. Uh, does look nice, the aluminum. I'll give them that. And again, basically 60 to 60 in either direction. 
Obviously, you would want this to be level, uh, unless you're going for funky, unique cuts uh, whenever you're sanding things down. So I think what I'm going to do real quick is just set this up in the default manner, and maybe we can kind of whittle something down real quick. I will tell you, it's got an offset pattern. I don't know what standard would be, or if this is a good thing or a problem. On this open side over here, you're going to have one centrally located mounting hole. On this side with a dust collection port, you have two of them sort of offset on each in, uh, end of the machine and I believe that's it I believe those are the three mounting points so what I'm gonna do is kill this hope the battery doesn't die get it roughly set up maybe plug it in and maybe sand a little bit for you all right so some quick checks here uh, first real complaint I would assume you would look while the adjustability is nice having your miter gauge slide easily in and out it would be nice if you could lock that in place without like having to utilize, say, a clamp of some sort on an end. So that's a minor deal. It seems like while this runs, if there's any vibration whatsoever, it's probably just going to rattle. And as you can see, it's not really even keyed. It just kind of tucks in there. So I could see that being a point of contention for some of you. But for what it's worth, it is square. Uh, if we come over here, both of them are off. I mean, they're level for what it's worth, but it's like... You know, if I'm using level, I want it to be perfect. <laughs> they're, they're not quite. Let me drop you down on this aluminum table so you can kind of see. Like, they're really close to being good enough, but just a little offset. So I think we would have to shim this side of the machine, which I can't do it one-handed, but if we got something under that, you know, maybe like, I don't know, uh, banding material, you know, something along those lines, a key, something about that thickness, I think it would actually level out perfectly. Uh, for most things, this is going to be just fine, but again, if you're like super critical about that, it is something to note. On that front, uh, I'm going to lock this down because I haven't done that. We'll see if this vibrates. I'll just fire it up here. I don't really want to put out a huge mess because this is kind of not where I want to send. <laughs> But uh, I do want to try and use this in the video, so we'll see if we can make that happen. All right, so I've done a rough check, you know, and we set everything up. Seems to be level, seems to be clear. We're just going to flip the switch and see what happens again. If there's crazy vibrations or something, as long as it's not going to walk off the table, we're okay. It's not mounted or secured really at all. It's just the weight of the machine, which again, roughly 30, 35 pounds. Uh, I would imagine this would be vibrating, possibly this table, the adjustment knob over here. Uh, that thing is like ridiculously inconveniently long threads. I guess the good news is if they snap off, you can extract them and still use it. But uh, the gate's tightened down, uh, the belt's fully secured, so we're just going to flip the switch and see what we get. It would help if I turned the surge protector on. I was about to say, that's that's about par for the course. I've had this sitting here for months and it's just a lemon. <laughs> it was totally plugged in, you know, that's the extension cord, it's just a surge protector. So here we go. I'm not quite sure, I think the belt, uh, top four inch belt is a little bit out of alignment there. <laughs> it's flopping a bit in the breeze. Might need to be tensioned down too. I'll try to rectify that, maybe layer flat so you can see it from that angle. I'll actually get everything in the picture and then we'll see if we can't sand something for the battery does. Due to time constraints, no shop bag, but I do have an empty planter's peanuts container. So we're going to loosely place that. Uh, I was gonna use some aluminum, but again, under time constraints, I have this handy. It is a jagged piece of wood. We're going to lightly apply pressure. This is probably a terrible idea, uh, but let's try to get you positioned over here so we can sort of get the workpiece in place. And I'm just gonna basically just try to get this peak off of the wood as our quick little demo.
right amazingly the battery is not dead and this didn't make too much of a mess uh, if you saw me abandon this you could tell this is already starting to ride a little bit again I guess you'd like have to come in and just clamp it down not a huge deal but inconvenient uh, I was really wanting that to stay in place that's why we abandoned things but check it out you saw how jagged that was it was like the Swiss Alps this thing is now smooth it's like buttery smooth better than this side <laughs> That's the rough cut. Uh, so it does work. That's awesome. This is a little six inch side. I'd have to say, given how weird of an angle that was, you know, with the mountainous peak where it just broke off, this actually did remove the stock fairly fast. I wasn't trying to pressure it. I was just letting the tool do the work. And uh, yeah, it actually left a really nice finish. So what I'm going to do real quick while this is running is uh, scoot you back a tad. And right here. There was, oddly enough, when I bought this, no Bauer belts, no Hercules belts, nothing. The only thing was Warrior, so I got uh, four inch. I did 120, again, in part, because I'll probably use the bench grinder, and this will sort of be more of a finite finish. Uh, right here, I've got some hook and loop stuff for the World of Warrior, and, or the Hercules hand sander, a little orbital. And then right here, we've just got the six inch 180s, uh, so this will sort of be more finite work. Obviously, this was just kind of to test that. I didn't want to go in and buy every grit, you know, find a super fine course and throw them down. These could possibly suck. <laughs> and if they suck, I'll only be out one pack. Uh, I'll try to remember to link these. Again, it is a pack of five, but again, that's my six inch discs. I do have the belts because again, my fear with something like this, it's cool it comes pre-populated, but let's say you're using it and the belt just has a freak deal and it snaps or the belt is junk and it's gone. You don't want to be caught without the consumable. You need to have those in place. That's one of the reasons for this entire box. It was for consumable stuff, although it's also holding a crud ton of tools now. <laughs> so that's that. I'm surprised we got done with the battery uh, going down, so I'm thrilled about that. Initial impression, it did great here. Will it do good with metal? I certainly hope so. Uh, I've got some weird things. I'll probably... I'm kind of thinking of buying one of those $100 U.S. General carts. I don't know if I'll set it in the top cradle or if I will build like a surface platform for it and using that and then I would put like the belts and the little six inch discs is all it would need to be there. Anything else is bonus storage if you will. But then I could just roll this around because I don't like running this crud in the shop. I like to do it outside. I could also build one, we'll just see, it could very well sit here or just go to a table somewhere, but uh, so far the planter's jar is doing well, I'm assuming most of the debris is down under this table, <laughs> so I'll take you down there. Uh, it's not bad, I can shop back that up in like, you know, 15, 20 seconds, it's nothing major, but uh, Bauer, 4 inch by 36 inch belt sander with the 6 inch disc sander. Again, if you want this miter table here, you can make that happen. If you want the guard here on top of the disc guard, you can do that. Uh, it looks like it will be very easy to change the 4 inch belts. This will be a little bit more involved, but shouldn't be difficult. Uh, I'm probably never taking that key out because I will lose it. <laughs> And right now it's here. It worked on initial startup. It worked on the initial project. That's all I can tell you. Will this last me two years? Will it go out in three months? My first project, second project, or will this thing be here in 20 years? Uh, we just have to wait. Will it stand the test of times? Only time will tell if you will. So this is not something I will use frequently. Uh, I know a lot of you, you like have something like this. You're out there in your shop every night or weekend. It's, this thing is burning the midnight oil. For me, this is sort of like an upgrade over wire brushes, Dremel tools, uh, you know, that sort of a thing, you know, my little air tool. Sometimes I don't want to fire up the compressor. I've never had one of these at home. It should be super nice. And again, for the money that I paid, I think we got a pretty good deal. So ultimately now we just need to see how we like it over time. If you've had any experience with this, some of you might have had this for years, or not years, but you know, quite a while, almost a year now. Some of you might have picked it up a couple months ago and just run it nonstop. Some of you might have got it and it was a total piece of trash that was dead on arrival. Whatever your first-hand experience is, please feel free to leave that. The end goal is ultimately to help people out. I'm introducing this product to something that's available. So far, so good. It could be total junk. I don't know. Again, this is not my area of expertise. I don't really care for it to be either. It's just going to be way quicker and time-saving for me versus what I was doing the rest of my life up until this point so 
Uh, again, your opinions on it, feel free if you say, man, you know, you could have got the rigid or insert this brand or these 16 manufacturers are the same and you can always find this one cheaper. Tell people, again, I take no offense to that, especially if you're somebody that uses this stuff and you've tried it all and you're like, man, if you spend another 40 bucks, you get the bee's knees. I know this is tempting, but you're crazy not to just spend 150 and get this. Tell people, again, that's why this video is here. That's why you're watching the video. You have an interest in this, whether it's because you know it's junk or you're curious about it, or you're like, man, I have one of those and love it. Uh, cool to see someone else with it. You're gonna really enjoy it. All that stuff is valuable, so feel free to share your thoughts. Last but not least, if you enjoyed, uh, leave a like. If you like what I do on the channel, consider subscribing. And uh, like I said, I'll have it linked down below. I make nothing off of that. It's there for your convenience. This is actually packed very well. If you want it shipped, maybe you're not close to a Harbor Freight. Uh, based on some other things I've had go down in the past couple of months, I would always recommend going to the store. Uh, you can have some serious problems when things get shipped, trust me. Yeah, so if at all possible, pick it up locally. If it's nothing you have to have or you're just wanting to upgrade and this would be the ticket for you, be patient. You'll save yourself 20 to 40 bucks most likely. So uh, with that said, I'll quit rambling. Stoked the battery didn't die. Hope you have yourself a fantastic weekend. It's uh, 9, 12. I haven't had supper. I should probably go do that, work out. But uh, got something productive done here in the shop. And uh, if all possible, I don't know how it will go, but I might try uh, holding those primaries and just knocking that off. And realistically, I can wire brush them. I'm old school, but I thought it would kind of be cool to fire it up and see if I could do it. So maybe I will, maybe I won't. We'll see. <laughs> so, once again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have consumable suggestions as well, if you're like, man, that warrior stuff is trash, or hey, that's actually decent for the money, or hey, if you want the best, longest lasting pad, this stuff will fit fine. You're going to like it. Uh, personally, from my experience at work, we run Norton. Uh, it's zero issues with it. I don't have it tear. It doesn't fail prematurely. Uh, truth be told, that's probably what I'll upgrade here. Tentatively, I went with the cheap stuff so I could have it here with me when this arrived. And more importantly, I'm not out. And uh, what I can do now, if the machine lasts past this round of consumables, that's when I'll upgrade to the better material and sort of have it kind of tie in. So uh, with that said, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. I hope I catch you back here for more action from the shop. All right, so it's really late at night, <clears throat> and I uh, just finished up rounding out a header collector. But something I wanted to cover here, I was complaining about this deal, you know, saying it was odd that it didn't lock into place. I thought more and more about it, and I was like, well, you know, I think that's probably targeted at woodworkers. And so inevitably, I believe that they would want you to be able to, I guess, slide the workpiece back and forth. And obviously, you'd set the miter gauge to whatever angle, and then it'll just sort of go up and down the track. That said, I think an area of improvement could be, you know, like it could be anywhere. It could be centrally, I guess. Mm, yeah, you could probably put it on this end here so you could do an angle that direction. Just have like a series of holes. I don't know, you could make eight of them just off the top of my head. And then have a set screw that would lock down through this aluminum bar stock. And then you sort of have the best of both worlds. I'm feeling under there, there's nothing drilled or tapped. But uh, it's easily something that you, the end user, could do. But in my opinion, that would be like a way, way nicer setup. They could even just do four holes or three. Um, but again, thinking on it, I was like, you know... It's probably for woodworking people and I guess they would, you know, slide the piece back and forth more so than say I'm sitting here thinking of, you know, like metal objects and <laughs> kind of uh, that sort of a thing on a disc uh, versus the belt. So um, that said, I'm thinking that's why this would be set up that way so you can basically just come and go at your pre-described angle. So uh, before I luckily have not edited the video, it was something I was thinking about in the middle of the night the other night. <laughs> I was like, you know, next time I'm out there, I hopefully will remember to record that. So I'll get this patched in. I can tell you as a bonus, I've used this. I mean, it was earlier this week that I opened it and, you know, we tested it out. Uh, I've used it quite a bit uh, considering, you know, that I'm like getting off work at 7.30 or 8.00. <laughs> getting you know two three hours out here a night basically uh, for the few days that it's been open like I've actually run this through its paces fairly well and uh, it's kind of a cool little deal so it's not dead yet that's a good thing but uh, like I said it's, it's definitely a nice addition so I'm still not quite sure where its perma home is gonna be it's here for now but uh, yeah that's uh, certainly saved me some time I'm still weird and prefer to do things by hand but there's some stuff where Especially like if people are bringing me crud, 
you know, it's like, I want it to be a good job that I do, but you know, I'm not like as, you know, like, and most people frankly don't have as high of a standard. Uh, so it's one of those deals, you know, like they don't know if I do it by hand or a machine, they probably assume a machine. So, uh, this saves me time and then I can just stick to old fashioned crud like this for myself but uh yeah pretty cool little deal so far hopefully it stays that way and uh you who knows might be seeing it appear in some future videos it may just be off camera i don't know but uh so far so good so i'm pretty sure that's why that would move and again easy to do you would just come in i probably use quarter 20 uh just keep it you know fairly robust but not like obscenely large and you could run however many holes you need for wherever you think you'd want to position it keeping in mind you know like the center over is kind of going to be where you'd want to do anything um i think it'd work great and then like i said the drilling of this piece the little aluminum track if you've forgotten what that looked like uh this piece right here i mean that'll drill like butter so uh, just plain jane aluminum stock there uh, the table really shouldn't be difficult to drill and the best thing is since that's all lightweight stuff you can get by with sort of like some uh, lesser quality, you know, tap and die sets. So, uh, my advice is quarter 20, though. I think that would be the ticket. If you're not using it, you have zero issues. If you want to lock it down, you can. And I mean, you'd be out 20 minutes, you know, to drill a couple of holes in there and have it set up. If you're not using it, don't need it locked down, don't have it there. If you do, you're home free. It's nothing fancy. You know, if you lose the hardware, God forbid, you know, you spend another, you know, 20 cents and you got a. <laughs> You know, some combination of bolt, flat lock, and nut, eye lock, whatever you want. So, uh, with that said, I'm going to quit rambling. Just wanted to get that recorded before I go in and edit the video and then realize I forgot to bring it back up. So, that'll save me time on that front, too. <laughs> it's late. It's hot. It's almost midnight. I'm going to head inside. Have yourself a great rest of the week, and uh, I will catch you for more action from the show.